Number 12 then from the 2008 Advanced Tire. And there's only seven marks here, but this is going to be quite lengthy by the looks of it, a McLaurin expansion, because you've got all that differentiation, then in evaluations, and then tidying up and so on. Obtain the first three non-zero terms in the McLaurin expansion of this. And again, there's a wee disclaimer here at the bottom. X is greater than negative two, less than two. Greater than negative two, just ensuring that that part there is never negative or zero. Right, first bit then would be What's the value when x is 0? Because I've got that already. Oh, well, I'll just pop this over here. So what's the value at 0? And unfortunately, it's 0. So that means you haven't got one of the terms. So I'm going to have to go through three, at least three differentiations now. Well, what's the first derivative going to be after that we upset? Well, I've got a product here. So it'll be 1 times, differentiate 1, leave the rest alone, plus x times the derivative of that, which is 1 over 2 plus x, and then a derivative. The derivative of the inner function is just a 1, so it just stays like that. Right, have I got a value this time? What's the value of that when x is 0? Well, obviously that's going to be 0 because it's 0 times something, but this will be ln 2. Because I've got 1 times ln 2 plus 0 times something, so that's just ln 2, so I've got one of them. Now what about the next derivative? What's the second derivative going to be? Well, the derivative of that will just be 1 over 2 plus x plus, and here's a product again, so it'll be 1 times 1 over 2 plus x, so that gives me another of them, plus x times, now the derivative of that would be negative 1 over 2 plus x squared. Power negative 1, multiply, take 1 off the power, negative 2, so it just goes down, drops down to a 2 underneath. I suppose I could tidy that up. So what I've actually got is 2 over 2 plus x minus x over 2 plus x squared. What's the derivative of that? At 0. Hopefully we'll get something because it's getting very nasty now. Well, when x is 0, I've got 2 over 2, which is 1. When x is 0, it's minus 0, so it's just equals 1. Now I've got to do it again, and this is all for very few marks when you compare, to the, compare it to the marks you get earlier on. Now what about the third derivative? Well that one there is going to be negative 2 over 2 plus x squared, because the power is negative 1, multiplying by that is negative 1, drops to negative 2, it's just the same as saying it drops, the power drops to 2 below now instead of being 1 below. And unfortunately here is a nasty wee product again, or you could think of a quotient, take it as a product, so it'll be 1 times 1 over that, so what I've got is 1 over 2 plus x squared, that was a product, so I'll have to have, that was a subtracted matter there, plus, leaving the x alone, it's going to be over 2 plus, whoops, x squared, multiply by the power which is negative 2, and then it would drop to a 3 now. Oh, now, what have I got here? Now, I'm not going to tidy it up, because hopefully, if this doesn't come to zero, if this doesn't come to zero here, then I won't need to do it again. So, what is there? So, I've got negative 2 over, and if x is 0, that's 2 squared is 4. So, I've got negative 2 upon 4, that's negative a half, take away. Here, I've, again, I've got the 2 squared is 4, but that's just a quarter. And x is just 0, so that product just comes to 0. So, that means I've got negative... Two quarters and one quarter, negative three quarters. So there's the first part of it. I've got my three non-zero terms. And now I just have to put that all together using this expansion, which is f of x equals, and I'll just write it with the sigma notation just now, it's the nth derivative at zero times x to the n over n factorial, going from n equals 0 forever. So what have I got then? So the very first one wasn't there. So I'm on to my first derivative, that's n equals 1. So I've got all of this when n is 1. Well, f1, the first derivative of 0, was ln2. And that'll be x to the 1, and I'll just write it down over 1 factorial. Plus, next one, the second derivative, which was 1, times that'll be up to power 2 now, x to the 2 over 2 factorial. Plus, for the next one, step up to 3, n is 3, so the third derivative at 0 is negative 3 quarters, x is power 3 over 3 factorial, and so it'll go after that. So that's just going to be ln 2 times it, maybe I'll put that in a little bracket, ln 2 times it to show quite clearly that the coefficient is just ln 2, 
2 factorial is just 2 times 1 is 2, so that's just a half, so plus a half of x squared. There's a bit more here. 3 factorial, 3 times 2 times 1 is 6. The 4 is going to come down and make it 24, so I've got 3 over 24, but 3 over 24 cancels to 1 over 8 of x cubed, and there'll be whatever after it, but there's the first three terms. Now, that was a lot for three marks, when you think back to the beginning of the paper. Three marks for doing all that. However, that first part could have been done a couple of different ways. So, for this bit then. Now, x times ln of whatever simply means x times whatever that becomes. So instead of trying to use the product, you could have simply said, what would that expansion be? And then the expansion of x times, it will simply be x times each of the terms. So you could have started with a different function, better call it g or something this time. If you'd started with this, g of x equals ln of 2 plus x, and just go through that Maclaurin expansion, that would be far simpler, because you'd have straight away g of 0 exists, because that's going to be ln 2. Next one, g dashed is simply going to be 1 over 2 plus x. So g dash 0 will just be a half. Two of them already. Second derivative of x will be negative 1 over 2 plus x squared. Remember, it's power negative 1, so multiply by negative 1, and then 1 drops further down to 2. And g double dashed at 0 is going to be then negative 1 over, if x is 0, 2 squared, which is 4 which means the exp McLaurin expansion of g of x, as I'm calling it, will be, remember that same notation, it's going to be sigma n is 0 to infinity of, if I'm calling that g, it'll be g to the n 0, x to the n over n factorial. So that's just going to be, of course you don't need to state that part of it, it's going to be, right, what was it? n is 0, right, ln 2. So I've got ln 2 of x to the 0, might as well put it in over 0 factorial, plus Next one, when n is 1, I've got a half times x to the 1 over 1 factorial. When n is 2, I've got, second derivative there is negative a quarter x squared over 2 factorial, etc. And what does that make? That just makes ln 2 plus a half of x minus an eighth of x squared for g of x, which means f of x is simply x times g of x, so for each of those multiplied by x, which then gives me ln 2 of x plus a half of x squared minus one eighth of x cubed, and so on. And that was much faster than the first way. But another way, having decided to keep the x out of it, and then to find the expansion of ln 2 plus x, would be to try and use an expansion similar to that that you already know to save you having to go through all of these derivatives. So another thing you could have done one step beyond this would be to say, right, I'll make that x times whatever that thing is. So I'll expand this. But that part, now I know one expansion. I know ln of 1 plus x produces x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the 4 over 4, etc. So I could do this, you could say, well, I've got ln of 2 times, now taking 2 as a factor would be 1, plus x upon 2, because that was the bracket that was going to form the expansion. You could do that instead, and then just launch into this expansion, because what I've got here is, well, when I multiply it out, I've got x times, and then when you split that, it's going to be ln 2 plus ln of 1 plus x upon 2. Now ln 2 is obviously just a constant, so I've got this expansion to put down afterwards. And that expansion would just be this one, where x is replaced by x upon 2. So I'll just keep this outside just now, although you're desperate just to get that out there to produce that. No, you just bide your time here. Plus, and then what's this expansion going to be? Well, it's just this. It's going to be x, as in the thing which has been added, so that's the x up in 2. Minus, I should have written, whoops, the thing squared. So that's the x up in 2 squared all over 2. And that's enough terms already. Now the second part. 
Hence and otherwise, deduce the first three non-zero terms in the expansion of this <coughs> for two marks. <coughs> well, those two marks would be quicker than those three marks, that's for sure, apart from the obvious ratio that was involved there. Well, that means I want to reuse this expression. Now, with a negative x there, that would be handy if I could just put negative x's in for all the x's, but that's not the, quite the same as that. If I want that to be a negative x, that should also be a negative x. So what I could say here is this then. I'd rather it looked like this. I'd rather it looked like 2 plus negative x. Because then it would just be this part replaced, where x was replaced by a negative x, so all of those are replaced by negative x's. But I'd want that to match it, so that was also a negative x. Now, if I had that, I could just use the original one, putting that in. Well, I can make that the same. Because if I just say the negative of, then that takes care of that part being an x, and so what have I got? That's the negative of the original function where x is replaced by negative x. Which means the expansion of that should just be the negative of this expression where I replace all the x's with negative x's. So that you've got ln2 of negative x plus a half of negative x squared minus an eighth of negative x cubed, and so on. And then what's that? Negative of negative, so that just goes back to, so I've still got ln2 of x. Negative x squared, all squared rather, is positive, so it'll have to be minus a half x squared. Negative x cubed is still negative. The negative times it makes that a positive, so that's going to go to negative an eighth of x cubed, and I'll still just put that plus and so on. And then the last part for two marks, hence obtain the first two non-zero terms, so only the first two terms of this. Now it does say hence, it's not otherwise, so that must mean somehow I'm going to have to take this and use the expression and get the expressions I've got before. Now you notice that difference of two squares, two minus x, two plus x, that's what we had before. So that's the same as x ln two minus x, two plus x. And of course, the log of the product can split into two logs. Each will have that factor x at the front. So I've got x ln, maybe I'll put the other one first, two plus x plus x ln two minus x. And then it's just a case of adding those two parts together. So what have I got? The first one was ln 2 of x plus a half x squared minus an eighth x cubed plus ln 2 of x minus a half x squared minus an eighth x cubed. Both of them went on a wee bit. Now you may have thought, well, I could just take the first two, and that should do, unless something disappears, and then you're going to have to go begging for the rest of them. You can see they're going to disappear. So when you add them together, I've got two lots of this then. I've got two lots of ln 2x. The x squared's disappeared, so I did need, need these, so I've got minus two lots of that as well. So it's minus a quarter of x cubed, and then whatever came afterwards. And the other thing, I suppose I could pop that inside and make that ln4, that'd be slightly neater. ln 4x minus a quarter of x cubed, plus whatever's left for that part.